Hi everybody. Good evening. Buenas noches. Welcome to Chaplet Monday on this September 30th, 2021, 2021. Did I say September 30th? Wow. August 30th. We're still in August. Hi, Jackie. Welcome, welcome. If you haven't already downloaded the prayer sheet, feel free to go find it now. It's on the website, hrccr.com. It's on the homepage. It's also on our chaplets page, www.hrccr.com slash chaplets. You can find tonight's prayer sheet there, as well as the collection, the entire collection of all of our videos and prayer sheets. Tonight, tonight is this dear woman and saint. Mother Teresa, St. Teresa of Calcutta, apologies for the backwards. Um, I wish it would automatically fix that, but that's okay. It does on Zoom, but not on Facebook Live. So you can go find your prayer sheet there. If you don't currently have a Mother Teresa chaplet, you can grab any of your Niners, any of your Niner chaplets you can use for this one. This one doesn't have the spaces in between, but it does have nine beads. Let me show you. So this is one of our more standard formations of a chaplet. Hi, Margaret. So you're going to have the crucifix. You're gonna have a crucifix. This one has blue in it. These beads are blue and white in honor of Mother Teresa's habit. And then of course the medal of the woman herself, the legend. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Jackie, hi, Sharon. Thanks for joining. So again, there will be nine beads on this chaplet, no spaces. And you can grab any of your Niner chaplets. I have to show you her tiny saint. It's too adorable. Ooh, Miss Jackie's already quoting her. I love it. Oh my gosh, y'all should put your favorite Mother Teresa quotes in the comments. I love it. I love it. Jackie says, I am but a pencil in the writing hands of God sending a love letter to the world. Ah, love. Oh my gosh. If you want to start that trend tonight, go for it. Also, remember to put your prayer, uh, prayer intentions in the comments. Favorite quotes by Mother Teresa and prayer intentions in the comments. And we'll go through them all. I mean, this woman said so many amazing things. Hi, Amanda. Hello, Miss Lenora. Yes, so now I will debut the Mother Teresa Tiny Saint. She's adorable. They all are. Hi, Michelle. They are all adorable. Hi, Miss Cleo. This is Mother Teresa, St. Teresa of, Cal of Calcutta. I'm just gonna make sure it doesn't focus on me. Oh, it gets all blurry. Anyways, she's holding a cross and she's got her um, very, very familiar habit on with the blue and the white. We're all very familiar. I think everyone who's praying with us tonight, I am sure everyone who's praying with us tonight lived while she was alive, you know, unless we get some babies on here. Um, Yes, Amanda, we're going to pray prayers of thanksgiving and praise and glory to God. Um, we have a lot of amazing intentions that we need to pray tonight. A lot of stuff happening in the world right now. A lot of protection that we need. And of course, an end to COVID. We will never stop praying for that until it's gone. Or at least as, as uneventful as a common cold. Um, yes. Janice, that is my favorite quote by Mother Teresa. If you want to change the world, go home and love your family. Amen. I love it. I love it. She was a religious sister. She didn't have a husband and children, but she knew the importance. You know, oftentimes, um, husbands, wives, uh, married couples, single people that aren't called to religious life, we can feel less than. We can feel like we're not doing enough, we're not praying enough because we haven't devoted our entire life to God. Somehow we've only given him a part of our heart because we chose to get married or we followed that vocation. And even Mother Teresa herself talked about how important it was to go home and fulfill that vocation of loving your family. 
Get your family to heaven. Get your family to heaven. Get your husband to heaven. Get your wife to heaven. Get your best friend to heaven. Margaret, Margaret's quote, not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. Oh, I love it. And it always, that always makes me think of St. Therese of Lisieux, the little flower. Um, but yes, Mother Teresa was the queen of doing little, little things that were more meaningful than even winning, wink, wink, the Nobel Peace Prize, right? I, I would say many of us would find it hard to follow in Mother Teresa's footsteps of literally kissing the poor and dying in the streets, literally cleaning their wounds and cleaning their, you know, infections. And, and a lot of us, you know, tighten our body and look away, look away from the beggars and, and poor people. We do, we do that. And that's our own fear that's taking over right there. And Mother Teresa went into the slums. She entered their world and she cared for them and she loved them and we should all be so inspired by that. Yes, Bernadette, she prayed for all faiths. She loved everyone equally. She literally was Christ walking on this earth, you know? Um, most of us who watched her live her life saw a saint. We called her Saint Mother Teresa before she passed away. So there was no doubt in anyone's mind that she would be canonized. But, you know, we could talk about her all night, but let's go into her bio because I think it's important to understand where she came from, what she went through, and what it took for her to become a saint. All the while, the bottom line being, if she can do it, we can do it. Amen. Amen. So she is... Um, her feast day is coming up September 5th. So um, Friday is the 3rd, 4th, 5th. So Sunday is her feast day. Woo, woo, day of resurrection. Um, she's the patron saint of World Youth Day. She's the patron saint of the Missionaries of Charity, which was her order. And she's the co-patron of the Archdiocese of Calcutta, which is where she did uh, predominantly all of her ministry work um, in India. So she was given the name Agnes at birth. I think that's precious, adorable. If you name your daughter Agnes, you would she would be sharing a name with Mother Teresa. Um, and she was born in Skop Skopje. I don't, I'm, I'm probably tearing that up. In 1910, she was the youngest child. Her parents were named Nicola and Drain. Um, she received her first communion at five years old. I love that. I would love for my kids to receive their first communion that early. And that gives them that much time of, more time of receiving the precious body and blood of Christ. Um, unfortunately, her father died when she was only eight years old and she had just received her confirmation again very early, but I love that. Um, um, and, and, you know, that was a time when it was very difficult for women to survive on their own. So they were very financially strapped as a family, um, struggling a lot. Um, her religious uh, formation was assisted by the vibrant Jesuit parish. So she's very heavily influenced by the Jesuit order, which is beautiful, um, of the sacred heart in which she was very involved as a youth. So she stayed, she threw herself into parish life and into ministry life at a very young age, which is awesome. So she started very, very young. Hello, Tim. Welcome. Um, she was moved to pursue missionary work very early on. So early, 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 she was, she, her heart was already screaming that she was going to serve God in some kind of missionary way. So she left in September, 1928. She was 18 years old. Um, and she joined the Institute of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So very devoted to our lady in Ireland. So she had moved to Ireland at that point. There, she received the name Sister Mary Teresa after St. Therese of Lisieux, hence her love for the little way and little things and doing great things with love. In December of 1929, that was when she took her first trip to India. She arrived in Calcutta, and she, um, after making her first profession of vows in May of 1931, then she was assigned to the community in Calcutta and taught at St. Mary's School for Girls. So she, she didn't instantly start, you know, helping those on the streets. She had a very normal job, vocation, calling, where she was teaching in the girls' school. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and then she made her final professions in 1937. Again, 
we have to think about how long she lived. So she was born in 1910 and she was alive when I was young. And so, I, I mean, I walked this earth at the same time as Mother Teresa, so did all of you. And it's phenomenal to think about. It's wild, wild. Um, that's after she took her final professions was the first time she started getting called Mother Teresa. So she was getting leadership roles in, in her own order. Um, she continued teaching. She became the school's principal. Mother Teresa's 20 years in Laredo were filled with profound happiness. Now we learn this from her journals and it's very important that we understand that a lot of what we know about her comes from her own personal writings and the writings of those sisters that she lived with, but her own personal writings. And this comes into play very much later when we learn about her heart, where her heart was through all of this. So she was celebrated for her charity already, celebrated for her unself unselfishness and courage, her capacity for hard work, her natural talent for organization. So she had a lot of gifts, she really did. And she lived out her consecration to Jesus in the midst of her camp companions with fidelity and joy. So outwardly, she was always very joyful, very humble, very loving, very, very loving. So, on her annual retreat in 1946, September that year, on a train ride from Calcutta to Darjeeling for her retreat, she received that inspiration, that calling, that deeper calling, a very pointed calling. She couldn't really explain this, but Jesus' thirst for love and for souls took hold of her heart. This is how she writes it. And the desire to satiate his thirst became the driving force of her life. So at that point, nothing could stop her. The calling was so strong, so vibrant, so alive, nothing could stop her from pursuing this very, very specific calling that Christ was grabbing her for, grabbing her out of the life. She was already living a life of service. She was already living a life of love and charity and kindness and goodness, and God was calling her deeper. So she began receiving visions and interior reflections and locutions. Jesus revealed his desire for victims of love who would radiate his love on souls. Come be my life, he begged her. Be my light, I cannot go alone. So he expressed his pain for the neglect of the poor at this time. His sorrow at their ignorance of him, but also his longing for their love. He asked Mother Teresa to establish a religious community at this point, the missionaries of charity who would be dedicated to the service of the poorest of poor. And so she already belonged to one order. God was asking her very specifically to start a new order. So two years of testing and discernment, two years, two years, just because she received that calling didn't mean that it would just take hold instantly, that she'd be able to instantly start something and instantly create this, um, this order out of thin air. Two years, two years it took. So, oh my gosh, talk about patience, talk about prayer, talk about the dedication and devotion and continued discernment. So she received, finally received permission to begin. In 1948, she dressed for the first time in that white, blue-bordered sari, and she passed through the gates of her beloved Laredo convent and entered the world of the poor. That statement makes me want to cry. Like, she le left her beloved order and walked out into the streets to no longer belong to into that safety of the convent, but belonging to the streets where the people that she would serve lived and breathed and died. And that's where she wanted to be with them. That's where Christ was calling her heart. So she learned a lot. Uh, she at the, that point learned, um, she got some teaching from the medical mission sisters so that she could actually serve kind of medically in a way. Um, and she returned to Calcutta and found temporary lodging with the Little Sisters of the Poor. On December 21st was the first time she went to the slums. She visited families, washed the sores of children, cared for an old man lying sick on the road, and nursed a woman dying of hunger and tuberculosis. She started every single day with the Eucharist, with Holy Communion. And then she would go out, rosary in hand, to find and serve the most unwanted, the unloved, and the uncared for. She specifically was searching for the ones that were being left behind, the ones that were being ignored, the ones that were kind of brushed off as, you know, no longer worthy of help. 
After some months, she was joined one by one by her former students. They began to follow her. They began to walk side by side. They began to join in her mission of love for these, the lowest of the low, the poorest of the poor. And then in 1950, the new congregation, the Missionaries of Charity, was officially established in the Archdiocese of Calcutta. By the early 60s, Mother Teresa began to send her sisters to other parts of India. The decree of praise granted to the congregation by Pope Paul VI in February of 1965 encouraged her to open a house in Venezuela. And that was soon followed by foundations in Rome and Tanzania and eventually on every continent. Starting in 1980 and continuing through the 90s, Mother Teresa opened houses in almost all of the communist countries, including the former Soviet Union, Albania, and Cuba. In order to respond better to both the physical and spiritual needs of the poor, she founded the Missionary of Charity Brothers. So there she incorporates our, our male brothers and, and, and threw them in, threw them into the deep end to serve with her and with her sisters. And then she formed co-workers of Mother Teresa for the lay people. And then the sick and suffering co-workers, people of many faiths and nationalities with whom she shared her spirit of prayer, simplicity, sacrifice in her apostolate. It was incredible how many lives she touched and how many faiths she touched. She crossed bridges that a lot of us have never been able to cross. Why? Because they saw her sincere love of humanity her sincere love of the soul, no matter their faith, no matter their practice, no matter their color, no matter their way of life, no matter their sexuality, she loved them all. No questions asked and no hold, no bars. Now, like nothing stopped her from loving every single person that she came in contact with. So you can continue to read about the amazingness that that is and was Mother Teresa. Um, and so we move on into how many, I mean, 1997, her sisters numbered nearly 4,000 and were established in 610 foundations in 123 countries in the world by 1997. She became Mother Superior. She met Pope John Paul II. That's one of my favorite photos of all time of the two of them is her little old hunched body and she's just clutching the hand of John Paul II and they look like the world's best of friends. They look like brother and sister. They remind me of St. Francis and St. Clair. That love for each other, that mutual respect, that seeing of Christ in each other and just an instantaneous bond, a spiritual bond that cannot be broken and just I just love that photo. I love that photo of those two. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> so why, why is it so important? Why did I bring up her journals before? Because to us, to the outside world, she had it all. It was easy to see that she was a saint. She loved her neighbor more than she loved herself. She followed Christ's footsteps. She had a smile on her face. She did it with joy and love and charity and generosity. And yet when you read her journals, you see the true Mother Teresa. You see the vulnerable woman who felt so far from God the darkness of the soul with everything that she was doing for God, our Father in heaven. She couldn't hear him. She couldn't feel him. She felt lost and alone. But did she stop doing what she was doing? Did she give up? Did she say, I don't feel God, so I don't know if he's real. I don't feel God, so I feel like this is a waste of time. No, she struggled through it. I mean, she fought through it. She kept lifting up the poor, lifting up the broken, giving them back to Jesus, placing them at his feet. She never once turned her back on God. 
even though she couldn't feel him with our humanity that we're always needing validation, right? We want to hear God's voice. We want to hear confirmation. We want to hear him pushing us in any direction. Just tell me what you want from me, right? And, and we're so weak, right? We're so needy. But Mother Teresa's story should give us hope. It should give us inspiration. It should give us a rekindling of our dedication to Jesus Christ and a knowledge that we don't need to hear his voice all the time, a knowledge that we don't need to feel him with our, our limited human emotions and our limited human thought and trust him, believe him, trust that he's with us, trust that he's guiding us, trust that we are where we need to be and if we weren't, he would move us. We just need to pray for the strength of Mother Teresa and we need to ask her for prayers. We need to ask her to stay with us and give us strength. Give us her strength. Give us her passion and give us her determination. Give us her hope. That's what we need to ask for tonight. Her hope. Oh my gosh, that got me all emotional. So let's now quiet our hearts. Let's start talking to her. Let's ask her for her help. Ask her how she did it. Ask her what kept her going. One of the most beautiful things that was mentioned was that she started every single day with the Eucharist. So who was her strength? Who was her food? It was Jesus Christ himself. And she was determined to be fed by him, but to continue to share him with the world. Take a couple deep breaths. Close your eyes if you need to. Breathe in and breathe out and slow your mind and slow your heart and slow all the busyness that's in there. Slow all your worries and frustrations. Let's place all of our needs and all of our tension, intentions at the feet of Christ. Let's give it all to him. Let's trust in him. So if you have any intentions, make sure you put them in the comments. I'm going to pray for continued healing for Bernadette after her surgery. We pray in thanksgiving for the blessings that are coming to the Reyes family. And we ask God to continue moving through that. Bring them where you want them, Lord. We pray for everyone in Louisiana right now. Over here stateside, we're feeling the... Um, our brothers and sisters in Louisiana are feeling the effects of Ida, Hurricane Ida. There's a lot of flooding. The most important thing right now is the loss of power. Many of our friends and loved ones. So we pray for all the damage. We pray for all those that are displaced, all those that are hurting and scared. We lift up Brother Martin who has been diagnosed with stage four cancer right after his intense surgery they discovered he has stage four cancer. And so we lift him up and we pray for his healing. We pray for his strength. We pray for courage. Diane would like to pray for all hospice patients and all those who are nearing death. We pray that they have courage as well. And yes, Bernadette, we continue to pray for an end to COVID. And we pray for Bernadette's niece and nephew who tested positive for COVID. We pray for all the students in schools that are being exposed. We pray that if they contract COVID, that they are able to overcome it. Tim would like to pray for Herb, who has multiple health issues. We pray for Herb. I love seeing him at adoration. We 
we pray for a safe delivery and a healthy baby for the Conroy family getting ready to deliver. Debbie would like to pray for her daughters who are dealing with pregnancy issues. Sharon would like to pray for the repose of the soul of Aunt Willie, May, Chris, and Nick, and also for the repose of the soul of Clement, Krennic, and strength for their families. We continue to lift up Marjorie, Tim's sister. She's successfully had two stents put in. She's scheduled to get two more stents put in in four to six weeks. So we pray that her body accepts them and we pray that she heals. We lift up Sharon's brother Scott and the special intentions. Sharon would like to pray for our parish, Holy Rosary. Um, for my dad, my mom is praying for my dad and I'll lift him up as well, his vertigo, um, dizzy spells, nauseous all day, and for all his clients that couldn't see him today, being a marriage and family counselor when he's sick, they don't get to see him. Francis would like to pray for her nephew and niece that have been diagnosed with COVID. Sharon would like to lift up her personal intentions. Amanda would like to lift up the soul of Irene Lopez, her aunt who passed away last week for her kids who are grieving. Lenora would like to pray for the victims in Louisiana and the soldiers that were killed, amen. We pray for the situation in Afghanistan. We pray for our soldiers that are still over there and trying to get home. We pray for the families of those whose um, young, young family members passed away with a suicide bomber. And we pray for all those who have to stay in Afghanistan and endure the horror that is happening for everyone who's suffering from COVID. Lenora would like to lift up her daughters, grandchildren, and her sisters to walk without pain. Amen. Jackie would like to pray for her daughter who's questioning her passion and commitment with nursing. Oh, man. She's just so tired. But yeah. There's not enough nurses. There's not enough doctors. And the ones that are working are working double shifts, back-to-back -back shifts, and they're so tired. And they're tired of seeing death. And they're tired of seeing families destroyed and broken apart. And they're tired of turning away people because they don't have beds. So you know what? Yeah, we pray for all the nurses and doctors caring for COVID patients and those that care for cancer patients and those that just see loss and death. And it's hard to... It's hard to stay motivated when you see that much, yeah, disappointment. Ooh, sorry. Janice would like to pray for addicts and those who love them and those who care for them. Oh my gosh, y'all are getting me emotional tonight. Bunny Antonio would like to lift up prayers for special intentions for a new journey. They're going to be moving next month. And we lift up her husband's new job. And we pray that it's a blessing to your family. Miss Elena would like to lift up those left behind in Afghanistan. Kara would like to pray for her family. Everyone suffering from COVID. For the repose of the soul of Grandmama Anne. Continued safe travels for Father Oren. For all of his intentions. The intentions of all of our clergy. For all of our friends in discernment. Claudia would like to lift up all worries and concerns as parents and also some personal intentions. Mona would like to pray for Catherine Perez's two cousins, Vivian and Hortensia, who both recently died for the repose of their soul and consolation of their families. Vivian has three children, 13, 12, and seven. Janice would like to pray for all those devastated by suicide. Margaret would like to lift up Randy to be healed from MCL. I'd like to add um, my friend Rachel, who's also um, undergoing cancer treatments. I'd like to continue to pray for Elsa and Javier. We ask Leo to pray for us. I'd like to lift up a friend who's in a pretty desperate job search. And I'd like for her to get the answers that she's looking for. I'd like to pray for my friends Greg and Angie and their families who are in Louisiana right now with no power. 
a lot of intentions tonight. You guys are a blessing to me. So I pray for every single one of you and I pray for all of your families. I pray for all of your hurts, all of your fears, all of your worries, all of your concerns. We begin this chaplet on the crucifix and we quiet our hearts. And while all of these intentions are so serious and so personal and so deep and so emotional, we place all of the intentions at the feet of our Father, at the feet of our Jesus, the crucified Jesus. And we ask the Holy Spirit to come down upon us and give us peace. We lift up Ibani's uh, friends, Bruce and Vicky, who also have COVID. Oh, thank you, Amanda, lifting up me and my family and Chaplet Monday. I love Chaplet Monday. Special intentions for a friend of Nelda and Rolando Garza who are struggling. And Kara would like to lift up prayers for friends who are dealing with health issues, pending surgeries, and job searches. So we begin with a deep breath and the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, you made St. Teresa of Calcutta an inspiring example of firm faith and burning charity, an extraordinary witness to the way of spiritual childhood, and a great and esteemed teacher of the value and dignity of every single human life. Hear the requests of all those who seek her intercession, especially all of these intentions we now implore. May we follow her example in heeding your cry of thirst from the cross and joyfully loving you in the distressing disguise of the poorest of the poor, especially those most unloved and most unwanted. We ask this in your name and through the intercession of Our Lady Mary, your mother and the mother of us all. Amen. We have nine beads that follow and on each one we'll be praying the Memorare. This is an incredible prayer, the Memorare. If you don't pray this at least once a day, you need to. And so I've included it on this prayer sheet in case you don't know it. But this is also what's used in an emergency novena. And this seemed so appropriate for the chaplet of Mother Teresa, an emergency novena. So novenas usually last nine days. But this Memorare Novena of nine Memorares back to back is an emergency Novena and it's done all in one day, in one sitting, and you pray all nine of these Memorares. So right now, we are praying an emergency Novena for all of your intentions, for all of your hearts, for all those hurting in the world right now, especially with regards to COVID, cancer, Afghanistan, in the hurricane. We lift every single one of your needs up and all of our loved ones as we pray these nine memorares. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly into thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy, hear and answer us. Amen. <laughs> Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy, hear and answer us. Amen. I'd like to lift up Bienvenida's prayers for the healing of her granddaughter and for her family. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy, hear and answer us. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, 
that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection implored thy help or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, our mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer us. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer us. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, our mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer us. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, our mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer us. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, our mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer us. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, our mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer us. Amen. On the medal of Mother Teresa, we pray this closing prayer. St. Teresa of Calcutta, longing to love Jesus as he had never been loved before, you gave yourself entirely to him, refusing him nothing. In union with the Immaculate Heart of Mary, you accepted his call to satiate his infinite thirst for love and souls and become a carrier of his love to the poorest of the poor. With loving trust and total surrender, you fulfilled his will, witnessing to the joy of belonging totally to him. You became so intimately united to Jesus, your crucified spouse, that he deigned to share with you the agony of his heart as he hung upon the cross. St. Teresa, you promised to continuously bring the light of love to those on earth. Pray for us that we also may long to satiate the burning thirst of Jesus by loving him ardently, sharing in his sufferings joyfully, and serving him wholeheartedly in our brothers and sisters especially those most unloved and unwanted. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Teresa of Calcutta, Mother Teresa, pray for us. So, I just want you to see the websites that I use to get these prayers. There are Mother Teresa's order from the missionaries of charity so these prayers are shared on their website and they're celebrated and they're encouraged and they're affirmed and they're just beautiful prayers thank you all so much for joining mother Teresa is an inspiration to all of us but also showing us to trudge through the darkness 
trudge through the lack of feelings and continue to serve our God each and every day, loving everyone that we come in contact with. I love you all so much. I hope you sleep well and peacefully and that you arise tomorrow with a determination to serve him, no matter who it is that approaches you. <laughs> God bless you all so much. I love every single one of you. I love our prayer group, and I'm so honored to be here. Have a wonderful night. If you would like a chaplet of Mother Teresa, please let us know. We're happy to send them to you. Um, next week, St. Peter Claver. Pretty awesome guy who I did not know much about. He's next week, next Monday here. Same time, same channel. Monday night, 8 p.m. live on Facebook. God bless you all. Have a blessed night and see you next week. God bless you.